God, marvelous God, amazing God, oh, you are a marvelous Alabi presenting to you Christianity in Focus. Christianity in Focus is a program that is going to be telling you all that has to do with Christian do. things we do in Christianity that we don't even understand why we do them and the rationale behind them. We'll be inviting special ministers of God who are endowed and enriched in the Word of God to tell you more. Amazing God, oh, you are a marvelous God, yeah. Unshakable God, marvelous God. Unshakable God, oh. amazing God, marvelous God. Amazing God, oh, you are a marvelous God, yeah. Hello, Hello there, there viewers at home. My, my name is Mumi. Alabi, and, and you are, are welcome, welcome to another, another exciting, exciting episode, episode of Christianity, Christianity in Focus. Thank, Thank you for being part of this program every time. God bless you. Today we're going to be looking at the topic, the purpose of the cross. And with me in the studio is an awesome minister of God who is so fitting to handle this topic for us today. But before I introduce my guest to you, let me give you a short biography about him. Is the minister, the minister in charge, in charge of Rema Christian, Christian Church. Church. He is the host of International Prayer Frequency. He has written so many newsletters and he is also an author. Before I show you who he is, let's take a short break. I will be right back. Amazing God, marvelous God. Amazing God, oh, you are a marvelous my name is Umi Alabi, presenting to you Christianity in Focus. Christianity in Focus is a program that is going to be telling you all that has to do with Christian do. Things we do in Christianity that we don't even understand why we do them. And the rationale behind them. We'll be inviting special ministers of God who are endowed and enriched in the word of God to tell you more. Amazing God, oh, you are a marvelous God, yeah. Unshakable God, marvelous God, unshakable God. Oh. Amazing God, marvelous God, amazing God. Welcome back. This is Christianity in Focus once more, and we will be looking at the purpose of the cross. The wonderful minister of God with me in the studio is in the person of Pastor Timmy Daniel. Can you say a little to our people at home, sir? Hello, viewers. The Lord bless you. It's um, a privilege and a wonderful thing to be here with you today. I thank my host for having me. The Lord bless you. Uh, it's, nice it's nice to be here, to be and I hope today you will be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, for those of us who already know Pastor Timmy Daniel, I know a host of us out there already know him, and the power of God has bestowed upon his ministry. I just need you to get a pen and a paper because we want to know the purpose of the cross. Most of us go about with the crucifix, you know, we take it about, we don't even know. Some of us even just inherited it. We were born and we just know people go about with it. We don't even know what it symbolizes, what it stands for, what is, what's the purpose. Let me just use the word purpose of it. The purpose is actually deep. I can't tell it. But I have those who are above me, those who are superior to me, like Pastor Timothy Daniel is going to break everything down, slice it, and put spiritual butter for you, for you to take your Holy Ghost burger. You see what I mean? Um, Pastor, thank you for coming on this show You're once welcome. more. Like we said, the purpose of the cross is a topic we want to look at today. But before we start, can you tell us what the cross is? Because it's a symbolic thing in Christianity. And you know, as this um, program implies Christianity in focus. We want to talk about things we do in Christian dawn, things Christians do. Christians go about carrying cross. Even in the church, we see crucifix everywhere. People hold on to it, whether it has Jesus on it or it doesn't have Jesus on it. But once you see it, you know it is for Christianity. You won't find it in any other religion. What is this cross? What is this cross? What does it symbolize in the religion Christianity? Well, you know, um, for so many believers, 
the cross is where I lay it all down. For some people, it's like that. For some, they, they look at it as, okay, where the price was paid for their sins. And, uh, but the, the ultimate thing that, why you see the cross in churches, you see it on the neck of uh, so many people. So many people wear it for religious symbol. That, you know, I, um, I, uh, I belong to Christ, you know, I belong to Christ, I'm a Christian for religious symbol. But the actual uh, meaning I have derived from it is, it is where the price was paid. It is where the price was paid. Jesus did not just die, he died a death on the cross. And ever since then, is, ever since then it has been a symbol that once you see the cross, it shows that a price was paid by somebody mm. and that was done on the cross. So for me, I define it as when you say the cross, the crucifix, that is the place where the price. It was not paid in the prison. It was not paid in the grave. It was paid on the cross. So that is the place, the price for you and I was paid. Thank you so much, sir. I ask that question because people use silver cross, diamond cross, golden cross. How do I use the word crosses if grandma permits me to? I really need to know. Like you said, people wear for religious purposes. But the actual sense is in me is where the price was paid. What price? Well, uh, we go back a little bit to the background of how the cross came about. You know, I tell people, uh, so many people wear the cross and you see Jesus on it. I tell them it's wrong because Jesus is no longer on the cross. He has resurrected. And he has resurrected. Amen. And then, of course, uh, so many people wear crosses with holes on top of it. The actual cross does not have hole on top of it. Once you boil a hole in the cross, it means something else. That is a topic for another day. So mm. we won't go there. Mm. Awesome. But uh, 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 where we're going today is look at the background of it. Uh, when we go back to uh, John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved that he gave. Mm -hmm. So the background of the cross was actually born out of what we call love. And at uh, the moment that happened, everything man would need or require in life, God, God delivered, delivered to humanity, humanity on the cross. When, when one, one was saying it is finished on the cross, it, it was, was actually, actually another beginning, beginning for mankind. It was a beginning of liberty. It was a beginning of deliverance. It was a beginning of transformation. So when we look at it, the, 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 the actual uh, orchestration of the cross came out of the love of the heart of God, out of the love of the heart of God for humanity. So that is where the purpose and the very beginning of it started from. And when we take it from there, it will make us to understand what is this love in the heart of God that make him send his only begotten son to die on the cross. So when you look at it from that angle, you will discover that love delivered the cross. And from the cross, the beginning of liberty for humanity started. Oh, right now, there's something striking my heart, struck, striking it deep, deep. He said, when it was finished for certain, it was the beginning for another. Think about this. It was finished for something, for some, for one, for a particular thing, and it was the beginning for another. Did you ever take time to say, because he went on the cross and said it is finished, particular things are supposed to have finished mm -hmm. in your life, mm -hmm. and it should be a resurrection, mm -hmm. the beginning to another episode of life. Pastor, do you allow me to say a new life? Yes, yes, yes. What do you crave for? Just on the finish aspect? Or do you crave to have the new beginning? Can you expatiate more on what I'm trying to say? From what you said, my understanding to it. Please expatiate more on that. You see, when we talk of the purpose of the cross, we are talking of so many things. But everything is in the focus of the love of God for mankind. When we talk of the purpose of the cross, we're talking of substitution. Substitution. That means a man came and, and took you out of the way and substituted his life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that means humanity was supposed to die. That is the wages of sin. If you sin, is the wages, the payment is death. You go to work and say they pay me my wages. 
of what, what you put in. Uh -huh. So, so the reward of sin is dead. But now, somebody else came and said, okay, instead of you handing the wages of your sin, let me take you out of the way and let me pay the price. Let me earn that wages for you so that you can have what eternal life. So, you see, number one, so when we talk of purpose of the cross, we're talking of substitution. He substituted his life so that you, Isaiah 53, 5 to 6 says, but it was pierced for our transgression, it was crushed for our iniquities, for our transgression, for our iniquities. The punishment, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we were healed. The punishment that brought us peace, that means before we were restless, before there was no peace. But when he substituted himself for what you're supposed to earn, then the peace came. Then, then the, 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 the healing came, came. Then, then the liberty came. came. So, so when we, we talk, talk of the purpose of the cross, of the cross number, number one, we're going to talk of substitution. substitution. Number, number two, is atonement. Atonement. He, he paid the price through the cross. Christ made an atonement, atonement for, for our sin. sin. You know, you in those, those days, the priests priest will uh, carry a sheep and go into the holies of holies to make atonement for the children of Israel. And they tie a rope around his waist when he's going in and a bear on his legs. So, so when, when the bear stop ringing, they, they know the priest has gone. gone. He, he has, has gone, gone in with sin in his heart, and then they drag him out. Yeah. But Jesus came so that that veil, that, that pattern of atonement that, 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 of the old days, days can be broken, broken. So, so that, that we can have access to the Father. So, so when we are talking of the purpose of the cross, number two thing, we are talking of atonement. Mm -hmm. If you look at Hebrews, First uh, John two two, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So, again, you look at what else does the cross, what, what else is the purpose of the cross? We're talking of reconciliation. He came so that he can reconcile us back to God. In the beginning, we understand that man lost it. The Bible says, through the sin of one, death came. And then through the atonement of Christ, we receive life. So, looking at that, we can go on and on. We have a reconciliation. We have a, 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 a redemption. Redemption from sin through the cross. Christ paid the price. This is chapter 9, verse 10 says, He did not enter by the means of the blood of gold and car, but He entered the most holy place once for all by His own blood, having obtained eternal redemption, not for any man, but for you. And for me, we can go on and on for justification, uh, but everything about the purpose of the cross was born out of the love of God for humanity. And the moment God shows and says, I love the world, I want to give, give something that will give multiple meaning to the life of humanity, and then he applied Jesus. And then when we look forward into this, I hope I'm okay to continue. Yes, sir. Yes, when sir. we look forward into this, that is what the Bible says. The Bible never called Jesus the, the understanding of God. It never called Jesus the knowledge of God. It called Jesus the wisdom of God. Now, when we look at the definition of wisdom, wisdom means the principal application of knowledge. So God said, what can I do to reconcile man back unto me? Then he knows that for him to do that, he must apply Jesus. So, so that, that is why when he applied Jesus, he was applying wisdom. That is why Jesus says, by me, Prince Reign and King decree justice, by me, wisdom was speaking. And who is wisdom? It was Jesus. And wisdom, Jesus is the wisdom of God. So at that point in time, God said, I need to apply something. He already has a knowledge of what to apply. And what he applied was wisdom, who was Jesus. And by that application, there was a delivery of mankind from destruction. So it was born out of his love for mankind. And the, and the moment, moment he gave Jesus, Jesus so, so many things, so many things begin to happen. Many, many things begin to come to life. Many situations begin to change. The, 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 those, you, you know, the Bible says about those that were dead, that they saw people saw their relatives on the street of Jerusalem. Because when he got to Hades, he broke the gate of hell and he set God's people free and they rode with him to hell. So you can see that the love of God knows no bound. Even there are testimonies I can share that when somebody called and we prayed, and then they call back and testify, and then you will ask yourself and say, oh God, even that one, you forgive him? And God said, yes, I did. Even though we that we are doing the prayer, we say, we hope God forgives you. 
Because what you have done is grievous. But the love of God supersedes the thought of the pastor. And say, as long as he has called for mercy, I have no choice than to show him mercy. And God shows his mercy. And then he was liberated from the oppression of hell. Oh, my God. Thank you very much, sir. Um, don't, don't just, just carry, carry the, the cross, cross without you knowing the purpose of the cross. If I had been carrying the cross before without knowing the purpose deep down like this, I will carry it more because I now know the purpose of the cross. And after you have listed all, all the things that generated from the purpose of the cross, I, I really love to talk first about the atonement. What would have become of I and you today if the atonement was not part of the purpose of the cross? Even then, the priests were bold enough. They were even bold enough. They tried to be the substitution. I mean, the substitute to do it. They didn't make it, but they tried to. They tried to, but they're still going there. And if the priest dies, they drag him out. That was it. When they were strict by the law, what would have become of I and you today? I don't think there's a substitution anywhere. Not even me. Not you. Pastor, pastor, would you, would you be, be the substitute, substitute for everybody? Not any pastor. So we should, we should, we should, we should, we should, we should really dig to know the purpose of the cross. Mm -hmm. I really I love, love that part of the atonement you talk about. Praise Glory God. be to God for Hallelujah. that. Hallelujah. I also love, oh my God, the redemption part of it by the virtue of the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even when you don't even know the deep meaning of it, you still call it, it still answers you. Don't deny, don't pretend about it. Yes, yes. But the redemption, I mean, the Yoruba will say, is it not the Isodomo, right? Yes. I love the, the deep Yoruba meaning, Isodomo. Who are you? Who am I? If not for the grace of redemption, it's another deep meaning according to what our pastor said. from destruction. Please, let's go on Google to look for the meaning of these things if we don't have dictionary. <laughs> when we say, let's ask people who understand Yoruba to interpret it to us in our own personal mother tongue so that we know what this thing is talking about. And you talk about reconciliation. You say, the Bible says God is holy. He's a spirit. And they will worship. Must worship in spirit and in truth. If the reconciliation was not there, we cannot stand God. Yes, yes. We cannot, yes. because we are so filthy. Even our righteousness are like filthy rags. Before him, it's yes. every day, every day, your righteousness, you still try to be righteous by your power, by your strength. It's still like filthy rags, that's what the scripture says. So we really have to thank God for the purpose of the cross, for reconciliation and liberty, liberty. Liberty. Can you talk more about liberty before we go into the love of God? Because you mentioned the love of God delivers. Mm, yes, yes. I want you to go into liberty. Because, you know why I want you to go into liberty? People abuse the liberty. I and you abuse the liberty that we got from the purpose of the cross. Pastor, tell us more about the liberty. Um, John 15, 13 says, um, Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, so that the friends can have liberty. And there is no way you can talk of liberty without going back to the love of God. There is no way you can talk of that. So when we talk of liberty, we talk of freedom. We talk of total freedom. Freedom from oppression, freedom from affliction, freedom from all the works of wickedness. So liberty means liberation from everything that has ever held man down. Liberation from the works of the flesh, liberation from the oppression of hell, liberation from affliction, liberation from whatever does not represent God. Even fear. Yes, liberation from fear, yes. liberation from whatever came in at creation that is not of God. Mm. You remember in the beginning, the very first thing that came, now you mentioned fear, it came back to my mind. Mm -hmm. The very first thing that came in after sin was fear. Mm -hmm. That was the very, very first thing that came in. Right yeah, yeah, it, it was, was fear. fear. I, I thought, thought, where are you? He said, said, I had thy voice and I was afraid. So when Jesus was applied, it was to liberate man from that hold and the spirit of fear. Many people said, I'm afraid to go to bed in the night hmm. because fear is having a hold on. So, so when the, 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 one of the major purposes of the cross is to deliver man from whatever the enemy has used to hold man down.
That is why the Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was wounded for, for, for our transgression. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Peace was upon him. So that means he has liberated us from restlessness and he has given us peace. He has given us peace. The reason why many believers don't have peace today is because there may be one thing or the other in their life that they need to sort out with God. Mm. So, so many people say, I've been serving, serving God. God. I have not, if you have been serving God and nothing is happening, the problem is not God. We need to check ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, because he says, my, your sins, your iniquity has separated you from me. So that means there is something you need to check. So liberty, the provision for liberty has already been made. We need to plug ourselves into it so that we can have that liberty in our lives. When you walk into a room, there is provision for light. For switch, if you don't flip the switch, the light won't come on. The same thing, liberty is in Christ. You will apply your heart to it, and you will see the manifestations in your life. You will see the manifestations. I, I agree with you 100%. It's like a person looking for that want to get out of poverty, needs a job, and he stays at home, never applied. <laughs> All the way yeah, when applies, it doesn't dress to be attractive, attractive and get over there. If you have a job, give it to me, and just fling his paper on the table. I'm gonna get the job. We don't want a nagging employee. We don't want somebody who's gonna be here and is gonna have some kind of attitude on the job. You don't want that. So before we go on a short break, I just want to ask a quick question because you said something earlier that when you have the cross with a hole on it. Uh, Hold on, sir. Okay. <laughs> when you have the cross with a hole on it, I want you to explain that. And then, is it okay to have the cross with? Some, some kind, kind of, of graven image on it. Well, you see, many has taken it out of context. I wish the one with the hole on it, you we have time. I know, because I know. it's completely <laughs> different. We will go back to just it's completely different. When you have a, a cross with a hole on it, it's no more a cross. It's not the cross Jesus died on. That is called ank. And ank is a different right. thing entirely that, that we will need time to dive to dive into it and say. And, and then, then um, to so me, personally, I don't, I don't believe it's okay to have a graven image on it. A graven image in the first place In the first place at all. To me, because, the cross. Yeah, because yes. one, uh, then that, that symbolism, symbolism of Jesus died and rose has been taken out of context. Because, because when, when you, you put him back, back on the cross, cross that means he's still there. That, that means he has, has not risen from the, he has not come down from the cross, he has not risen from dead. So having any of that at all, and you see a lot of people, they have it, they kiss it, they, they, they put it on their pillow. I have seen many people put it on their pillow, still yet they have the worst nightmares <laughs> of their life. So that means it's not doing anything <laughs> for them. Is the one that made the graven image. And, and then that means not doing anything for them. I have heard of testimonies of whereby it was made, it was a symbol of the cross, but what was inside was demonic. Until they broke it and took it out before the liberation could come to that boy that was wearing it. Hmm. So it is, we need, we have to get to a point in our life understanding that this relationship we have with Christ is not with the graven image you are putting around your neck. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's a spiritual connection. So because when we talk of Christianity, we are talking of the work of faith. The work of faith. So it's a spiritual connection, not connection to the cross you are putting on your neck, but a spiritual connection to God by the atonement that Jesus has made through the liberty that the Spirit has given us. Amen. Amen. If you're just joining us, this is Christianity in Focus, and with me in the studio is Pastor Timmy Daniel. We've been talking about the purpose of the cross. Uh, the Spirit surpasses the flesh. Any time, any day. And the manifestation of the physical has started from the spiritual. If you don't understand things you do in Christianity, ask your pastor if you're too lazy to go to the scripture. But I tell you out there, if the spirit surpasses the flesh, you shouldn't be lazy to do the searching. I mean, the research yourself in the scripture. Our pastor also talk about people putting the cross under their pillow and stuff like that. I tell you today, there's nothing as great as having the word digested in your system. We're going to take a short break. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Hello out there. My name is Mi Alabi, presenting to you Christianity in Focus. 
Christianity in Focus is a program that is going to be telling you all that has to do with Christian do. Things we do in Christianity that we don't even understand why we do them. And the rationale behind them. We'll be inviting special ministers of God who are endowed and enriched in the word of God to tell you more. From the break, if you are just joining us, this is Christianity in Focus, and of course, I remain Mumi Alabi, and with me in the studio has been Pastor Timmy Daniel. So far, we have been talking about the purpose of the cross. So, if if you are just joining us, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to say you missed, but just sit down, let them bring the, your meal to you. Pastor, we've been talking about the purpose of the cross, and I really appreciate you for your. Tremendous contribution so far, so good. Praise My God. question right now is, if the cross has been actually proposed for, mm -hmm. what is the rationale behind that? What does it bore to man? Well, you know, like I said earlier, it, it came out of the heart of love, you know, for humanity. John 3, 16, you know, uh, every Christian should know that. For God so loved the world, that he gave. <laughs> that he gave. You, you, you discover even as human beings, if you love someone and they want something for you, you give them. Right. Yeah. But this time around, God loved the world and then he gave Jesus. He said that whosoever. So because he gave Jesus does not end there. You and I have a part to play. You and I you have and I a part to play. to play. You know, I was you know, watching, I was watching a, story a story where, where uh, a young man went to a barber shop, shop and um, after he was done, he said, uh, he, left. he left. And, uh, and uh, the barber said, barber said, you know what? You know what? There is no there God. Is no God. Yeah, and the, the Christian was wondering why. He said, if there is God, there will be all this chaos in the world. There will be all this trouble in the world. And the Christian brother could not say anything and he left. But when, but when he, he got, got outside, outside, he saw a man, man walking, walking around, around with a very huge afro hair, bushy hair. And then he brought the man into the store. Mm. And he told the barber, there is no barbers. The man said, no, there is. He said, no, there is no barbers. The man said, if there are barbers, this guy shouldn't be walking around with his hair filled up like this. Mm. Oh, the barber said, oh, well, you see, the problem is he didn't come to me to have his hair cut. Then the Christian brother replied, the same thing. We need to go to God right. to restore us. So, so when, when God said, I am giving Jesus, he is giving everything that man needs to enjoy life. So when we look at it, the Bible says, uh, 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 in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Now Jesus is the word. So when God gave Jesus, uh, the word of the Lord said, he sent forth his word, and he healed them of all their diseases. So when God gave Jesus, he was giving his word. When he gave Jesus, he was giving healing. When he gave Jesus, he was giving deliverance. When he gave Jesus, he was giving restoration. When he gave Jesus, he was giving total liberation from every oppression of error. When he gave Jesus, he was giving power. Even for as many as believed, to them he gave what? Power to become. When he says power to become, that means power to obtain and do whatever you desire and achieve it. He says power to become the sons of God. So when you become the sons of God, that means you become a God. You cannot see a lion giving back to a goat. No. When he gives back, he gives back to a lion. And when the lion grows to be of, to be of age, when he roars, it's like the roar of the father. So when God said, as many as we said, he gave power to become, that means he has given you power to become like him, to obtain whatever you need obtainable in the world. So when he gave Jesus, he was giving power. But you have a part to play. You have to believe so that that power can be made manifested in your life. So everything God gave was given on the platform of his love for humanity. He wants to see us back in control. He wants to see us back in charge. He wants to see us have dominion over the things he has created. He wants to see us have dominion over the devil and, and liberate humanity mm -hmm. from the oppression of darkness. So God gave us Jesus, but 
pour out of his love for the world. That is why I tell people, don't ever condemn anybody. A young brother called me and said, Pastor, this is what I have done. We finished prayer that night. He called and said, this is what I have done. I, I couldn't even pick up that light, so, so I, I called, called him the morning. He said, this is what I have done. I said, ah, why did you go that route, you know? And he said, I don't know. It, it, it was the devil. I said, well, this one doesn't look like this is the devil. So I said, well, you know what? Let's pray. And then we prayed the prayer of mercy. We said, oh, God, show him mercy. Blind Bartimaeus in uh, Mark 10, uh, 49, he cried for mercy. God answered. Mm -hmm. We prayed the prayer of mercy. This is somebody that would have ended up in jail for 25 years. Mm -hmm. They reduced the sentence from 25 years to four weeks. Qualified for uh, probation in two weeks. I looked up and said, ah, ah, God, even that one, because when we talk of the love of Christ, there is no limit. Mm. There is no limitation. If you go to him, you will enjoy everything he has packaged in Jesus for your existence, for your liberation, and for your transformation. So that cross was not just, say, let me just do anything. No, it was well targeted, well packaged, well delivered, and, and well executed. So the purpose of that cross is born out of a heart of love that man can never comprehend. I remember even in scripture it says, if you that you are of the world, if your children ask for bread, you don't give stone, you know, they, they, ask, they for fish, ask for fish, you don't you don't, how much more? Yes. Your yes. father in heaven, mm -hmm. whatever you ask in my name, I, I will do. Mm -hmm. I tell you out there, religion is a big deal. That's one. Christianity is a bigger deal. That's two. And number three, the cross is the biggest deal. Mm -hmm. You need to understand the purpose of the cross, and that's why our pastor has come up with this topic on this program to talk about it you need to after i wouldn't believe after this discussion on this telecast you need to sit down find time out of no time despite the tight schedule here we all have all the things we do find time to really dig into this thing we are talking about so i have a quick question for you mm -hmm. i know in christianity we we do a lot of things and our people need to understand why we do them and that's why we have christianity in focus, focus to the glory of God. There are two things I have noticed. We have two big celebration, and people are so carried away with this celebration. The birth of Jesus and then the resurrection, which was born out of the purpose of the cross. Which is greater? Well, um, I won't say um, any is greater because we are still talking about one person. Right. You know, when Jesus was born, he said, joy to the world, the Lord is here. So when he was born, he brought joy. And by the time he died and rose again, he brought exaltation and life. So we, if we're talking of two different, different persons, persons, maybe, maybe yes, yes, but we're yeah. talking of the same person. So none is greater. Jesus is Jesus. One, Either, leg, one leg to the other. One leg to the other. Right. Either as a baby <laughs> or as, a, as an adult. He started his ministry at the age of 30, and at the age of 33, he was over. But yet, the effect of what he did in three years, was ordained. he was keeps, keeps speaking. He says, the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. So he, when he came, it brought, it brought joy. And then at the end of it, he brought life. So none is greater because one, one cannot happen without the other one. So looking at greater, no, it's still Jesus. We, we, I, I, I want to believe both uh, instances work together to achieve what we are celebrating today. Mm -hmm. We celebrate his birth, mm -hmm. and then we celebrate his resurrection. And a lot of people say, well, the devil thought he had him, but God had a better deal. And then by the time Jesus rose again, we can see the purpose of his coming and of his death on the cross. Thank you so much, sir. There's, there's something that the Lord just dropped in my heart again. Mm -hmm. I remember a scripture that, that talks about, that says, Blessed are thou, even though you were not there to see, but you still believed. You believed. Mm -hmm. You believed. Now, we were not there at the time of the cross. When was I born? You might even be wondering, 2,000 years ago, Pastor Timmy was not even here. But you would be a blessed person if you would believe it more mm -hmm, because mm -hmm, you were mm -hmm. not there and that's why my favorite apostle in the bible is apostle paul 
It was more than half of the New Testament. Yes, not because he even wrote that. He, he was, was not, not, he didn't walk with Jesus. Jesus. Yes. But he, he was, was an aggressive believer. person when, when he was against, against when, when he was an antichrist. Antichrist. Yeah. And the same aggression he, he yes. used persecuting the church was the same he brought in to save lives for Christ. This is part of the reason I love him for. What is it that is an endowment in you? For example, you are talkative and you go about gossiping. Would you be like Apostle Paul, as he said in the book of 1 Corinthians 10 verse 15? He said, I am not worthy to be who I am today, but for the grace, sir, for the grace, grace of, of God. God. Mm -hmm. What would you transform that grace to? What would you transform it to? You know, this is what I do. Just transform. It's a gift to talk. And you're using it for gossip. I use it to gossip, to backbite, to destroy other people. Now, I'll, I'll be a blessed person. Even though I didn't work with Christ, but today I believe the purpose of the cross. To now use that spirit of being a talkative to proclaim the gospel. Mm, mm, to yes, proclaim yes, the pastor, yes. tell them more. You see, you tell mentioned something about grace. grace. I was going to say grace is a universal currency. Amen. You see, when we talk of grace, we talk of empowerment. Mm. We talk of empowerment. So, so and when we talk of grace, we are talking of that universal currency given to man to make you excel and become what God wants you to become mm -hmm. in whatever area you find yourself. Mm -hmm. So that means, like you are saying, maybe somebody is a talkative now. If God has released grace to, to minister to people upon that kind of a person, that grace can propel him to be that person that will prepare the most powerful message. You see, you need grace to preach. You need grace to even speak, to sing. Mm -hmm. You need grace to play the instruments. You need grace to do this kind of talk show. So that is why I say grace is universal. When that grace is given, it will empower you to do what God has deposited in you to be a benefit to mankind. Mm -hmm. God did not create anyone to, de to, to, to destroy others. He created us so that we can show forth his praise by the exhibiting of the grace, the, the power he has put in us by his grace to be a blessing to humanity. That is why I say grace is universal. Once you have it, what God has put in you, you will see it, it will begin to multiply. That is why when we talk of the story of the, uh, of the master giving the talents to the servant, he gave one uh, 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 five, he gave one two, he gave one one. And each of them have grace for the level of talent that he has been given. The one that got five, got five more. The one that got two, got two more. Mm. The one that got one did not utilize what he got. That is why it was taken, it was taken out. That is why what he had was given to another. Just like you said, somebody might be there looking. God has put something in you. And he has given you grace to activate it. To activate it to life. To develop capacity. So that it can be a blessing to someone, but yet you are sitting on it doing nothing. Mm. That is why Jesus, his death was not in vain. It's for something. If the apostles sat down and did nothing, mm. we won't be here today. Mm -hmm. If Apostle Paul, after he got converted, did not do anything, all the scriptures we are reading today that is addressing Christians' life, we won't be here today. So that grace is universal. And once it's released, and I believe it has been released upon us the moment we gave our life to Christ. We should work at it, work with it to achieve what God wants us to become in life. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. One of the things you made mention of here, I want to talk about it. You talk about dominion. Mm -hmm. I know the purpose of the cross, according to our pastor, and I agree with him, is, is bonded to love. Mm -hmm. The love of God. The purpose of the cross is bonded to the love of God. Period. Now, you talk about so many things, the atonement, the redemption, a lot of things, but we need to talk about dominion. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I want us to talk about dominion, I had an encounter sometime. The, the dominion will not just come without the word of God in you, accompanied by faith, because mm -hmm. the work of faith is a practical thing. The, the Christian so, work is a yeah, work of faith. It's a work of faith, and it, it has to be practical, you know. Either you have people's testimony, and you hold on to that to build your faith, mm -hmm. or by the virtue of things you have been through in the past, like David, when he saw Goliath, he was not afraid because he remembered the goodness of the Lord at the time he met the bear. Mm -hmm. He remembered and was like, the bear is even bigger 
and stronger than you, Goliath. Right. So, so all that was saying was like blabbing because, because he knows who he served mm -hmm. and he still overcame. Yes. Now, I'm looking at dominion. At, at a point, point in my life, the enemy was about putting me to shame. Mm. And I got friends came around. They tried to tell me, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. God just called them to come around. But there my help was not. Because all the options they gave me was still like, well, a way out. But the shame was still there. But I remember when I was by myself in the kitchen, I heard the voice of the Lord loud and clear. He called me by my name, like he called someone. And he said, you have not asked. I said, Papa, what am I there to ask? You gave me a face, say, but you are not pleased by this option. I said, yes, I'm not pleased. He said, you don't need to fast. Just meet me every three hours for three days. Mm -hmm. I tell you by the third day, calling on the name of Jesus. Yes. Because it says yes. every knee shall bow. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the stain of shame in my life, has anything that has a name will bow. Right. Has to yes. bow. Mm -hmm. I started calling on Paul the name. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, the knee of shame in my life, Bow. Mm. And the second day, the Lord gave me a solution Amen. without Praise nobody, God. without having to call my friends again. Mm. When they called me back, Alpha, I said, The Lord I've has been it. faithful mm. and dependable. Mm. I want to talk about that. This is dominion. Yes. Dominion yes, yes. over everything, not just having a pet in the house and controlling it. Dominion over every circumstance in the, uh, in, in the Lord. Say, Taste and see that, that, that the Lord is good. Taste and see that, that, that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Pastor, push this back to our people. In, in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 28, the genesis of everything, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Listen to verse 27. He says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created he them. Then 28 says, And God blessed them and said unto them, Listen, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the heart. And subdue it. When we're talking of dominion, we are talking of having power to subdue. He says, subdue the earth, replenish it, fill it. So when God created man, he, 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 God was a God of dominion. That is why the only way he could reference the creation of man is let us create man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have power to dominate. To do whatever they want. That is why man can go to the moon today and still come back. It's part of dominion. So that instinct to dominate is in every man. That is why we want to go to moon, we want to go to Mars, we want to go to Venus. We believe we can conquer everywhere because it is a man to dominate. And so when you see anybody in slavery, you say, This is not right, this is not humane. This is not what it should be like. So God put it in us to dominate and subdue the earth. That means anything that comes contrary to God, we are supposed to be able to dominate it. And one of the ways you dominate is, of course, by constant fellowship with God. You are created in His image after His likeness. You need to continually be connected to Him so that the flow of dominion can continue to flow from Him to you. And then when you have that constant fellowship, in word, in prayer, you will begin to walk in dominion that even all the devils, you know the, 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 the demon that the seven sons of Skipper tried to drive out. Mm -hmm. They said, come, Jesus we know. Paul, Paul we know. We know, but yes. who are you? Because there is nothing in them that gives them authority or dominion mm -hmm. over that devil. Mm -hmm. So God has created us in such a way whereby if we stay connected with him, we will walk in dominion. If we stay connected with him, we we'll walk in liberty. And for many of you that are listening, listen to me. You can walk in dominion. You can walk in power. For as many as believe today, they give power. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to trample upon serpent and scorpion and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You have it in you. All you have to do is make sure you have a fellowship with the owner of your life and you will see dominion. You will see yourself dominating in all areas of life. You are supposed to dominate in your career. 
dominate financially, dominate in your businesses, dominate wherever you find yourself. So, so listen, listen to me. From this day forward, my prayer, prayer for you is that you begin to dominate. Mm. In all fears of life, you will dominate. Mm. Where you have been dominated before, you will go back and dominate mm. again. In the name of Jesus. Mm. I see a ton of event for somebody. Mm. You have once been a captive. Now you will be the captor. All those that have led you into captivity, you will turn around and lead them into captivity. Mm. Because you will begin mm. to dominate. Mm. Watch out. God has put in you the seed of dominion. Mm. Activate it in the place of prayer, in the place of studying the word, and in the place of working consistently with God. That is one of the price that Jesus paid on the cross of Calvary. And he recovered our dominion out of the hands of the devil and delivered it back unto us. The Lord bless you. I am confident that from this moment on, you will begin to walk in that dominion. In Jesus' name. Thank you Amen. so much, Amen. sir. Amen. I, I, I was going to tell you, after, after the speech, we're going to bless the people, mm -hmm. but the Spirit of the Lord works at, as one. Amen. From Amen. prayers, it led to prophetic. Amen. God is great. Um, I decided to end it up to draw the curtain with he, the pastor explaining dominion to us. Because sometimes I have a library, I read a lot of books, I read part of the uh, ministers of God's book, I read is Bishop. Oh, you did. Well, I don't go to his church, mm -hmm. but I know. And I've read Living in a Supernatural World. Mm -hmm. He said, you are gods. Living in a Supernatural World, past Bishop Oye Dekbo talks more about taking, taking dominion. If you don't take dominion, it's like you're leaving your birthright. And I didn't even discuss with Pastor Timmy Daniel. And he has talked, he mentioned it. And what he has said is like a summary of what Bishop Oye Dekbo said in that book. After listening to this episode of Christianity in Focus, I recommend you get Living a Supernatural World and read more about you taking dominion. If you are not taking dominion, you are missing. You need to take dominion over everything because you are God. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going to draw the curtain today. This is Christianity in Focus. Like I always say, in everything you do, be your best and be good to yourself and to others till I come your way the next time. We say, Bye God bless bye. you. God bless you. <laughs> Amazing God, marvelous God. Amazing God, oh, you are. Amazing God, oh, you are a marvelous God, yeah. Unshakable God, marvelous God. Unshakable God, oh. Amazing God, marvelous God. I'm